And so using a gradient in this fashion means that you can do the same things, not just with image maps, but of course with any kind of color texture from procedurals or anything else or whole networks and tweak and remap those and take any number of different inputs. So that's lovely, but there's other stuff that we can do with gradients as well. Such as, for instance, I'm going to switch to Y coordinate here. So I'm going to put my gradient on the up down here in this kind of a fashion, and I'm going to make quite a tight ish line there. Because here's the other thing I can use gradients for, and that's to produce masks. So we see here I've taken two procedurals into a mixer. One is the background, one is the foreground, and I'm just using the 0, 1 value of the color channel here. Obviously, that'll be the red channel. I could have used alpha had I entered values for alpha instead of these values here. But I'm using that to drive a mixer node, and so my gradient is effectively a mask for these two textures, materials, whatever else. This can be useful in all sorts of situations when you've got things running down walls or dust only on the tops of surfaces or a gradation between two things based on the angle of incidence to view. Any number of things you can mask. And it's very quick and it's very easy, but it's also very clean. I'm basing on just a single coordinate here, and even with a good blend distance between them, there's not a lot of messing up. It, it is, of course, a very straight, flat blend, because it's just basing itself off a single coordinate. But we can perturb these, because if we hit the show outputs for any of them, then we get key connection outputs for those things, which means I didn't even need to go this way at all. I could have gone this way instead, and just fed the textures directly into the key colors. Now what I enter in here, even though you notice I can still change it, it makes no difference to the output anymore. It outputs these color values at each key. Again, I could have driven the output alpha values in the same way by connecting things to the alpha connections. But the one that's interesting when it comes to masks is the position connections, because of course these keys have a position value of where they are on the input range, and I can drive that nodally too. So, for instance, I could say that these are the rough positions I want my keys to be at. So I'll take a couple of scalars here and just note them down. So key 1 here is 0.1177, just like that. And key 2 here is 0.7855. OK, that's all good. I can grab me, say, let's say, a spot info to get the X coordinate of this surface. I can bring out my old friend sine here to get the sine of each of those X values. Bring out a pair of scalar adds. So as I can add those two scalars to the result of sine and plug those into the positions. And we can see that the position of the key at each spot on the surface is the sine of the x-coordinate.